Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. And I'm Charlie. And we are at Redbird Flight, and uh, oftentimes people wonder what it's like to fly different airplanes. You guys give them the opportunity. Where are we at right now? We do. We're in the Redbird Flight booth here at Oshkosh. We've got Sims in the background, got aviation all around us, so it's, it's pretty exciting. When he says Sims, he's taking it to a whole other level. You're not just flying something with lots of screens around, you're actually feeling something, aren't you? That's, that's right. Yeah, we, we build Sims. Everything from small uh, desktop sims for home pilots to full motion sims for flight schools and flight training operations. Now one thing about this is people actually are able to log time on your machines. They are, yeah. That's incredible. If you guys think about this, oftentimes when you're logging time, getting flight instruction, uh, that's very costly, very expensive, a lot of gas, a lot of maintenance. This gives people the ability to really learn, but also you can bring them through things that you don't want them to experience in real life, like failures and, right. and uh, troubleshooting, things like that, right? That's right, and not only that, but the airplane can be a terrible classroom. When you go into sensory overload, everything's going on at once, when all you need to be focusing on is one specific task. The simulator allows you to sort of hone in and focus on that one task, get that perfect before you start adding in all the distra distractions of you know, actual flight. Fantastic. So your booth currently is filled with a whole bunch of great simulators. We're gonna go ahead and check those out right now from the VTO all the way down to some dual control systems. All right, so this is actually a dual instructor, dual control. It's called the MCX simulator. We're gonna be flying a 172. So as far as the main gauges are all very similar to what you'd see in an actual cockpit, looks like. Yeah, you're in a steam gauge 172 right now. Um, so that should be pretty familiar. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and push throttle and there you go. Oh, that's good. We're airborne. <laughs> nice. So this cockpit is, is made to be uh, interchangeable. We can change out the gauges, the instrumentation, and the flight model simply by taking off these four thumb screws. Okay. This panel slides off and a new one goes on. So within a matter of about two and a half minutes, we can go from a steam gauge 172 to a glass panel Baron. You know, a flight school actually will have these and say, okay, we're gonna do training on this model for a while. That's right. And they go ahead and set it up. We came into this market because we saw a hole here. The GA market was completely unserved with uh, for devices like this, for technology like this. Yeah. Uh, so what it came down to was building a better value proposition, build a, a simulator that can do more and, and that can actually be sold at a price point that makes sense for the flight school. Well, when you consider the amount of pilots you can put through this, that you don't have to worry about weather cooperate and you can go through the winter, that's incredible. This is, this is really a great tool to actually get flight instruction done. Yeah. And a student can actually log their time on this, huh? They can, they can. Yeah, this is this is used in uh, in flight schools around the world. We have we have devices in 48 countries, over 1,800 devices in the field now, okay. and uh, they're used by universities, local flight schools, individual pilots, flying clubs, you name it. Um, and they use it for everything from a pilot's very first flight all the way through as they're working on their ATP. Okay. Fantastic. Cross country, yeah. practice, navigation. Absolutely. It's got an entire world database in here. So you got a student, you're about to sign off for a solo cross country, put them in here and make him fly the solo cross country by himself, tuning in the radios, flying to the right destination. Make sure he's getting there, he's landing, he's safe. Um, they know exactly what they need to be doing before they ever get into the airplane. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and see if we can set up for a landing here. Well, I'd love to watch you succeed. <laughs> we started to deteriorate. We've gotten, gotten a little bit marginal VFR. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I can feel the bumps. <laughs> Got a turbulence. Yeah, we do. <laughs> it's a, it's a really bad day up here now. Wow, you can really feel it. Yeah, you didn't think I was gonna make it easier on you. No, did you? no, you did not. <laughs> Oh wow! That's a that's a crosswind. Well, you got you got sixty knots worth of worth of crosswind just right here. <laughs> Let's get on the brakes. <laughs> they say any land you walk away from once, right? Yeah. All right, ground loop time. Oh, there's that was the fence. <laughs> oh, I love you. Luckily, you know we're in a you simulator. I'm never gonna be in the Alaskan bush people episode. You know, <laughs> that was awesome. You really can turn on the coals really quick and really change can. people's parameters and make them react. But You really can. The one thing you can obviously tell, guys, I am not an experienced pilot, and this really makes you work. My heart is literally pounding right now just from what I was experiencing in the simulator. 
And uh, that's what you want to do. You yeah. want to make it real. And that and that scenario, that's not something you would do to a student pilot. Yeah. I threw everything at you. The strongest wind, the strongest gusts, severe turbulence. <laughs> I failed your engine at the last minute. You were not going to succeed. And you don't want to do that for to a student, but it was a whole no. lot of fun doing it to you. Well, you're talking about sensory overload and stuff. You can choose how much you stress the students and how much you take away. And, you know, people do need to have that experience. You never know what you're going to come into. That's right. And to be able to experience it in a world where you're safe and you're going to walk away where you can communicate about it afterwards, it helps people get better. All right, so where are we, Charlie? This is the EAA Pilot Proficiency Center. Okay. We're walking into the Redbird Sim Center here. Inside the center here, we have 14 Redbird LDs, each staffed with a volunteer CFI uh, all day long, every day of the show. Wow. And pilots come in, they sit down for about an hour session, they'll go through two or three scenarios, whatever they have time for, and they're learning. They're learning from these instructors. They're not just using these as demonstrators or joyrides. They're, they're actually doing uh, training. I noticed on your board and stuff, different pilots were signing up for different types of training. So it's not just the same for everybody. That's right. It looks like it's actually different. Like they say, I need to hone in on this skill. That's right. Like crosswind landing, things like that. That's right. So we have the LDs that have VFR scenarios and IFR scenarios. We've also brought our X-Wind, which is our crosswind landing alignment trainer, okay. that specifically teaches that. Is that, that here? It is. Let's see that. Fly it? Yeah. Let's go. This is a motion device that was specifically designed to teach the five seconds before touchdown. Okay. Uh, when it really matters for you to be straight on target and straight down the uh, straight down the runway. So I can put you in a in a crosswind situation, in a windy, gusty situation, and hold you here for two hours while you build that muscle memory. That's incredible. I w we won't stay that long, though. What I want you to do is keep the airplane over the center line and, and lined up with the runway. Now, you're in a zero-wind situation right now, so this should be a pretty simple task. As we get into this, we'll go ahead and crank up the wind a little bit more. At the end of it, you did pretty well. You landed right on center line. 957 out of 1,000 is a pretty good score. But at zero wind, you should have done pretty well. I should have Let's go ahead and start it again. Okay. This time I'm going to give you a 10 knot crosswind component from the left. All right, so now it's about finding that slip angle that gives you that proper alignment with the center line of the runway and keeps you from drifting left or right. So let's go ahead and point your nose with your toes. Give, you, give it a little bit of right rudder. Right rudder, right rudder, right rudder, right rudder. Point it straight. There we go. Now. You're going to be drifting left when you're doing that, so you're going to correct it with correct it with bank, right? Okay, not bad at all. Oh, really? Now, here, here's what we see. We see you landed with a three a three degree crab, and you were six feet from the center from the runway center line. <clears throat> that was a ten knot steady crosswind. This is going to be about this is going to be five gusting to eighteen. So here's what, here's what happened. This is a gusty situation, and this is pushing that demonstrated crosswind envelope of, of most single engine aircraft. But this is when it really matters, and this is about getting your reactions automatic, so that when a gust comes in, you automatically know what your feet and your hands need to be able to do to hold that runway center line. All right, you had it until that gust came in, right at the end, right at the end that blew you off, and that's exactly the time when a lot of these crosswind incidents happen, is when, right when you're about to touch down and, a, and you pick up a 10 knot gust and all of a sudden you get blown off to the right, yeah. and you're not ready to react quickly to make sure the airplane stays right on center line. Correct. And, and straight down the runway. So that's what this device is. What a, what a great device. I mean, I keep on wanting the flare and everything, but I realize it's, it's mostly putting the attention where it needs to be, which is in your feet that's right. and in your hands with the, the bank that's and right. the uh, Incredible. Absolutely incredible. What a great tool. All right, let's go so, see the warbirds, huh? All right, so we've gotten to hop all over Oshkosh with right. you here. And uh, one really cool thing after the uh, the pilot training center you've taken us to, we're in Warbird Alley, aren't we? We are. And behind us is something uh, very special. You guys do special projects each year, right? Yeah, every year we find sort of a, a fun project to build a custom simulator out of. This year it's a P-51 Mustang. Yes. Uh, modeled after Bud Anderson's old crow. Well, this is so cool. So whether it's instruction, whether it's uh, continuous improvement on pilot skills, or whether it's for fun or inspiring the youth, and this is really cool. You guys put kids first on this. Yeah, we do. This was uh, this was an idea that Warbirds of America had. When they saw the P-40, they, they came to us and they said, we want to build something that's going to engage the, the kids, the kids and the idea of, of, of Warbirds and in flying. We've got this idea for this engagement center. Will you help us out? And we said, absolutely. I've always wanted to build a P-51. That seems like a really yeah. interesting new project. Let's do it. So right now, we're literally surrounded by P-51s. Hearing them in the background, we're going to get to fly one. Here we go. 
<laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and take a left turn. Man, the, the sensation and the sound uh, together. It's incredible. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> uh oh, I think I did something bad. You know, I see a nice spot over there. Let's go ahead and try to put it in for a landing. Let's see if I can get out of the way of that tree. <laughs> Oh man, I, they're, they're never going to let me anywhere close to a P-51 ever now after this, but what a great experience. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. Now you've actually worked with another company here to collaborate with. What we, is that? We did. We, uh, we worked with our good friends at A2A Simulations. They built the flight model, that ultra realistic flight model for the P-51. So Charlie, you have a website, right? Of, of course. More about you? Yeah. Where's that at? We're uh, redbirdflight.com. Okay. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Um, just look for Redbird Flight. Look down below in the descriptions. We'll put a whole bunch of links for you guys. Thanks for being part of the Flight Test family, and we'll see you next time.